Greetings and welcome to The Connector. Our goal with this podcast is to connect you with the people who are building and using Azuqua each and every day. I'm your host, Dave Darrington, Director of User Enablement, and today we're joined by Ben Lauer, the Developer Platform Leader at Tableau. Welcome, Ben. Hey, thanks, Dave. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us, and also welcome Dan Kogan. He's here in the room with us today. Welcome, Dan. Hey, thanks, Dave. All right. So today... We're excited. We're going to talk about how Azuqua can now be used, this is really cool, to drive workflows based on Tableau usage and events. So are you ready, Ben, Dan? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's rock this thing. Great. My warm-up, my tee-off is I want to get to know a little bit about you, Ben, like your background, how you got to Tableau, you know, just kind of wrap it up a little bit. Sure. I've seen some interesting things in your background. Uh, Microsoft, uh, you've worked with Connect. I like that. I'm a gamer. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about you. Tell our audience about you. Yeah. So, I mean, to answer the specific question about how I got to Tableau, I mean, I rode my bike today. Um, just to answer that question specifically, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, you have the, you, you you have a sound effect. Like I will. I'll we just drop we that need in. we need a board here in the room. We can just like do that. Um, well, I joined Tableau about three and a half years ago, and I was the first person there to focus 100% on the developer audience. And so Tableau has this long history of making really great products that people love to use, like great user experience. But thinking about developers, people who use APIs to do things, to extend the product, is just something that I still feel we're, we're still kind of like getting better at. So I, as you said, I was at Microsoft for a number of years. Most of the time I was there, I was working on developer platforms of some kind or another. I worked on Windows Phone when we launched Windows Phone 7. I worked on, as you said, Connect, HoloLens. So I have this really deep passion about working with developers because I kind of see my personal mission in life is to help them realize their dreams. Developers want to accomplish something. They have this creativity. They mm -hmm. see a problem. It's, it's like I just love being part of helping them bring solutions and products and, like I said, just creative wackiness to life. And so when uh, when Tableau reached out to have a conversation, I was like, let's, let's talk. And then, you know, the company's mission also just really resonates resonates with me. It's, we will say officially, our mission is to help people see and understand data. And so Tableau, uh, like our, our kind of genesis as a company was in this visual analytics space, mm -hmm. helping create visualizations to ask and answer questions. But we've grown much more into a platform. And so, you know, as you said, I, I, I lead our developer platform team, which is just 100% focused on APIs and extensibility and enabling developers to do integrations of, of various types. This is really exciting. Like there's one quote I found on your website that I love and my background is a scientist. So I, I'm always thinking about like, oh, I could do this. And I could try this and could do this. Tableau encourages and inspires curiosity in people. Yeah. I love that because if you're, you know, a developer is naturally curious. You're trying, you're trying to integrate different things, make your life easier. So, hey, we're already good friends. <laughs> well, and the, the other thing about Tableau is, I mean, one of the things that made it as successful and popular as it is, is it gave data analysts developer powers, right, without really having to learn how to write code. The alternative to doing a lot of what you do in Tableau to get to the same answer is SQL, right. is writing SQL. Yeah. And Tableau just blew past that whole barrier. I'll, by the way, now talk about why I'm even here. I've totally just crashed this podcast. Yeah, go for it, dude. <laughs> um, in that I started Tableau about the same time you did. I think you might have been like a few months ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I liked working with Ben there, really enjoyed it. And Tableau and Azuqua are basically like my two favorite companies on the planet. And they share that same kind of thing of it gives non-developers developer powers, right? We definitely take a much closer to the API side all the way and start there. But that was the common thread that I saw between these two companies. Or as I've heard some people kind of put it, um, Tableau, not always the easiest product to use, but it was the easiest way to do really hard shit and your alternative to that. And that's that's what made it so amazing and powerful. And then once you start going, you start peeling the onion back a little bit and learning how to use it, you can do amazing things. And it is incredibly easy compared to everything else. Right. And Azuqua, the minute I saw it and started playing with it, it hit me the exact same way. Like, yeah, off the bat, there are things in there that can make you, that can snap two things together a little bit simpler. But if you really want to do some impressive, complicated, amazing, powerful things, you're into writing code probably as your alternative. Right, and we so, don't want to do that. I mean, we want to open that world up. That's right. Right. So we we share that commonality. So but talking about developers at Tableau was a little bit unique when you were doing it. Like you were kind of out 
out there on your own on a ledge a little bit when you first started banging the drum for developers three years ago and that most people thought developers want nothing to do with Tableau. Right. Yeah, no, I was I was a team of one for a while and just slowly been, you know, growing our team and our focus. Uh, and, you know, when I joined, there were there were definitely a few APIs, but there wasn't like a focus on it. Like we had this thing you could use to do Im- to embed uh, Tableau dashboards. We had a REST API you could use for some automation, but really focusing on enabling developers. Because like you said, our bread and butter at Tableau is still an information worker, a data analyst, like people who don't want to, maybe don't even know how to write SQL and do all these things. But as the platform has grown and grown, there are just a lot of opportunities for even more integration into customers, environments, and workflows. And, and I think that's where our work with you guys is really interesting. You know, we're, we're, I, sh- I should just point out to everyone listening right now, like we're sitting here in the Azuqua headquarters office in Seattle with this amazing view of Puget Sound. I mean, I, I wish you could see this because it's stunning. And next week, we're heading down to New Orleans. I think all three of us here will be down there along with... I think the forecast is 16,000 people um, at the Tableau conference. It's going to be a good party in New Orleans. Yeah, it's going to be really awesome. Say right, New Orleans. (laughs) (laughs) We got to get ourselves primed, right? (laughs) We got to get ready. But I'm just really excited about what we're going to be doing down there together and the hackathon and, and, and all that. So I think what might be interesting for everyone to hear a little bit is... Tableau's journey on the developer platform side of things, as you said, when you started, there were a couple APIs, right? But a, a few, I think a few things happened there that really helped explode. That one's been your leadership, actually, frankly, and banging the drum on it and talking about it and really pushing hard on this. But the other is Tableau's really kind of evolution from being a really powerful tool to a core business critical platform, yeah. right? And anytime you're a platform, and that means all sorts of other tools and applications need to work within and around and inside of it. And so that's that Tableau's pushed that way, has pushed the developer platform forward. Your leadership and other people around that pushing the API strategy forward around that. Tell us a little more kind of about what that what that last three years has looked like going down from where it started to where it is now to to what to where it's going to be after TC this year and some of the things you talk about. Yeah, it's that's really great. I appreciate you saying it's because of my leadership. I actually think it's because customers have demanded it. Honestly, <laughs> like I as as Tableau as as we get more integrated into our customer environments. They just expect more. And when you when you go from being a desktop tool on one person's machine to a server or a SaaS product used by an entire company, hundreds or thousands of people, the demands and expectations just change. So I think that that's probably been the biggest driver is Tableau as we've grown in the enterprise. Customers just say, hey, we need to authenticate against the Tableau products with these types of auth methods that we use. We need to be able to integrate Tableau content and embed it into custom applications or into SharePoint or what it might be. We need to have APIs to integrate Tableau into our other software and other workflows and other processes. So I think that's probably been the the, the biggest driver for us is just that's what our, I mean, Tableau is, I will say the most customer centric place I've ever worked. You know, we we really listen to customers. We really look to just serve our customers better than than anyone else. And so I think it's really just responding to those customer needs and demands that's right. really kind of helped. Now, specifically, I, I think that we've done things over the last few years. We've continued to um, expand our API footprint. One of the things I'm really excited about is just this summer, we released a brand new API called our Extensions API. And that was actually, that wasn't so much, like we didn't have customers per se come to us and say, hey, Tableau, we need extensions inside of dashboards. But when we worked with some of our partners and we heard some of the feedback from customers on how those partner integrations worked, it really kind of put us down this path of saying, no, we need to have a better extensibility point right inside of our dashboards. And so dashboard extensions are are now possible. And we have this extension gallery that we've shipped that it's growing with more partner created extensions. And it's really enabling our customers to just you know, stay inside of their flow inside a Tableau. I mean, a lot of times we'll hear from customers that they get an insight 
from a dashboard uh, from a viz and then they leave to go to another application Pursue to take it. action. And so customers would literally say, quote unquote, help me close the loop in Tableau. And so we think dashboard extensions are part of the answer there is now instead of me having to leave and go to my inventory management system, I can actually have that integrated right inside the dashboard. So the dashboard can become kind of an application in and of itself. Yeah. Could, could you give us an example or give the audience an example of something concrete? Like where, where is something that is, oh, that totally makes sense to me. How I, I would want to have this system tied to my, my biz. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So about two summers ago, about two years ago, we had a few partners that do what's called natural language generation or NLG. Mm -hmm. And what NLG means is... And you still, For the record, you still have those partners. We still they just, have they those. They just came into the ecosystem a couple of years ago. Yeah, we still have yeah. those partners. But those partners started an integration with us using uh, uh, one of the APIs we had at the time. And the integration that resulted, while powerful, was just kind of of clunky. It was kind of hard to set up for customers. It wasn't tightly integrated because what, what happens when you use an LG is the data in your visualization is processed using machine learning and, and right. AI. And then it generates a textual description, a narrative, if you will, about the data. And it can actually surface insights that you may miss. And so some of that feedback that really also helped push us down this extensions path. And so narrative science and automated insights are two of these partners and they have these dashboard extensions that you can drop into your dashboard and have these, you know, nice embedded um, stories right there alongside the viz. Some other examples, we've got this partner in, in the Netherlands called Infotopics and they've made this whole suite of custom visualizations that you can just drop in. So you can literally just drop this extension in you do a couple of clicks to configure it, and now you can have these custom viz types that just were either really, really hard to create in Tableau before or just not possible. Is this, are gauges in Tableau now possible? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I, I, I right. guess I guess they they are now. They are they are now. <laughs> if even, that, if even, that's your jam, if that's your jam, if there are visualizations <laughs> you didn't actually ever need, they are now <laughs> easily to drop in. That's great. One yeah. more RFP item checked. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that aren't really familiar with Tableau, that joke probably just went over your head. But right, but hopefully all the Tableau <laughs> listeners are there and get it. They're so. laughing and saying yes, yes. Cool. So, so in this case, now you're able to like reach out, pull data back in, and this is like the source of truth, the the authority. I can stay in product, and I don't have to go jumping about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Back to this thing about, hey, if I want to close the loop in Tableau, I can now just stay right here inside of this application. I guess the two examples I gave weren't necessarily close the loop examples, but but we had um, one of the examples that we showed last year at our conference was from uh, our customer Wayfair, the online retailer, and they were actually building a dashboard extension for their suppliers. So they have, you know, thousands, maybe tens of thousands of SKUs or stock keeping units on their website that they sell with tons of suppliers. So they were using Tableau as a supplier facing solution. Hmm. And they wanted the extensions to be there so that the dashboard became an actual a way for the suppliers to take action based on what they were seeing and learning. So yeah, we're just, we're really excited about extensions, like finally, you know, getting out to market and just been really happy with the customer interest and, uh, you know, all the excitement around it. That's, this is super cool. So let, let's pivot our discussion a little bit. Let's talk about right now we're recording in advance of the big conference. Yeah, it's next week. I can't believe it's here already. 16,000 people. Yeah, that's that's nuts. And then a cohort of that is this hackathon, right? Right. Tell us more about like the goal for that and then how we're all working together. Let's talk about this a little bit more. As you said, Dave, TC starts next week. Um, Monday, we have uh, what's called a hackathon. If you don't know what a hackathon is, imagine a bunch of people in a room with their computers, with a lot of Red Bull and coffee and food throughout the day, just building things like people come in with an idea or they they join up in teams maybe I don't have an idea but I want to help build something mm -hmm. and it's really an opportunity for people to test the limits of Tableau we provide all these APIs what can you build with them so I think the the benefit to the 
the customers who come and hack is it's a chance for them to learn some new skills. It's a chance for them to network with other people. They've got this crazy idea. We have uh, over 40 Tableau engineers at this hackathon who oh, will wow. be mentors. So you can get help from the people who build the product. So you'll you'll be very quickly be able to understand is your idea even possible? Mm -hmm. And from, from our perspective, it gives us a really great opportunity to get feedback. Like we unveiled the extensions API last year at the hackathon and the people at the hackathon heard about it first. Like we didn't even talk about it until the <laughs> following day. Like it was the following day in the keynote when we unveiled it to the world, but everyone at the hackathon got like a sneak peek. And so we're actually going to do that again this year. We've got some new things. I guess since this podcast isn't going to be aired until afterwards, right. I can go ahead and spill the beans. Sure. But, but this year we've got a new platform capability that we're adding called webhooks and webhooks are kind of like events that you can subscribe to. Um, and they can really be um, powerful things in workflows. So uh, it's it's actually the thing that we're really excited uh, to work with you guys on because now working with Azuqua and Tableau, you can have all of these events happening in your Tableau system and those events can then just happen and come right to Azuqua for a workflow. And as a, as a point of reference, um, as we were building out a demo with, uh, with you guys, actually, we, we didn't even need your help. Like you just gave us an account and we signed in, but we wanted to build Best something. Best way to have it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But we were building this thing and we said, hey, anytime there's a data source refresh failure in Tableau. Because that things, just kind of happens. These can happen. Actually, uh, one of the, the biggest reasons it'll happen is the credentials will change. So I'll have this thing stored with my database connection and those credentials will get reset so that'll fail in Tableau. But if it's a mission critical data set, you're going to want to know about that. And so what we said is we want to do it where if that event happens, we want an entry into service now so that the help desk team is notified right away and can go and troubleshoot. And it took us less than three minutes to set that up in Azuqua. I mean, it's pretty yeah, awesome fast. that you can just go in, I can set up the webhook in Tableau, point it to my Azuqua incoming webhook URL, and then I drag in the service now thing, type in my credentials, create incident, but I mean, it's, it was really, really cool to see. So I'm really excited just about webhooks in general, because I think it's going to be used in so many cases, but also specifically with a tool like Azuqua. And it's going to enable, I think, non-developers, you know, this sort of no code, low code kind of environment to just do so many interesting things. That's, that's amazing. And then, you know, with our 200 plus connectors to pretty much any major SaaS app that you need. You mentioned ServiceNow, but it could be Slack if you have a small team, or it could be email, or it could be whatever. Yep. So it could be you know, all these verbs. And then what I'm actually excited about even, that's a great use case, but anything that's starting, you'll obviously have to enable events and webhooks on more things, but the more you can start to push into other systems based on data, like marketing automation tools. X event happens in Tableau, now I want to kick off an email to my customer list that fits this portion because of what's happened in Tableau. Right. Boom, go set that up to Eloquar, Mark or HubSpot or whatever you're using for marketing automation. Right. The possibility will start to become endless, I think, pretty quick. But it will, that full circle you talked about customers have been asking for, the webhooks, I think, is where, and with workflow is where you can start to do that, right? Your data can drive an action. Azuqua can take that action, drive your data to go do things in those other systems. Right. And now we've got, now we've got the full circle. And I have my two favorite companies working harmoniously together. Yay. So <laughs> master plan coming together. So are you saying here then, so now we have the webhook capability and now we have the extensibility of your platform with a platform like ours, where it's peanut butter jelly time. You know, you've got everything here. You've got this awesome visualization of data. Now you're making things actionable. Right. So when, you know, like I have a, a, an inventory and that inventory is like way over the top, I can send a message to somebody and say, well, we need to do a, a clearinghouse event to get this stuff out of our warehouse. We have, you know, a BOGO sale or whatever. You do just amazing amounts of things, but it's not just you're seeing the data. Now you're doing stuff with the data. Yeah. I mean, like Tableau's mission, see and understand. And I feel like understand is this like, I feel like we've not even begun to scratch the surface because understand, okay, maybe I'm being a little, little liberal in the definition, but to me, when I think understand, it really implies all of the things we're talking about. Right. Hey, I, I, I to, to your point, Dave, if I have a bunch of excess inventory and I want to do something about it, well, I don't want to just know that. 
I actually want to take that action. Like that's what this is all about. Like I, I like knowing things, but when it comes to business, you want to know things so that you can take action and derive value and create value for your customers and so forth. Exactly. So yeah, I, I think that that's, that's a really, now I, I should just say what we are announcing next week, what we're, what we're launching next week is a developer preview of webhooks. So we are going to have a very small subset of the events that will eventually be available. So we'll have events around workbooks and da uh, data sources uh, for the preview. That's all we have right now. But before we ship this for real in a production setting, we're going to add events around users and groups and projects. This idea around inventory, I think that's where we would get into, so we have this thing in Tableau and our product called data-driven alerts, mm -hmm. where you can actually define these types of, hey, I want to get an email sent to me if my threshold or my sales, blah, blah, blah. So I think when we can put webhooks around those, now you're talking. Yep, like I think now learning could, is going to be the most powerful yeah, portion of it. Because yep. I could say, hey, I want to set up a webhook when we hit our quarterly sales number. I want to have that webhook fire into a Zuqua where I have a custom workflow that uses the Twilio API to send an MMS message to my entire employee base with an animated GIF of like confetti and like, hey, we did it, like whatever. I mean, like that is actually really doable and, you know, by anyone. Like you just got to go sign up for a Twilio account, get a couple of pieces yeah. of data, drop them into a Zuqua. And, you know, this type of thing is really exciting. Or Ben, you can go further. You can have it call up the nearest um, party store and order a keg and a bunch of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can uh, do an IoT thing to ring a gong in do the office. Do you guys office. have a, a carrier pigeon integration yet? Is that uh, we're, working, cool? we're working on that. Wait a minute. Isn't there a startup in that? Uh, CarrierPigeons.com? Uh, it's, it's for the Seattle and Portland hipsters. Oh, no, they're drones now. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> there you go. So that's true. Drone delivery. Yeah. So if customers start to play around with this after the developer preview, what's the best way to get feedback to you guys about what other events and actions to um, to light up? Yeah, great. Um, so the other thing we are going to announce next week for developers is a brand new developer program. So this is like, like we as a company are now like, hey, we are like serious about the developer audience. So we are launching a developer program at the Tableau conference. It's free to join. And people who join this program, you get access to a free online Tableau online sandbox where we actually will be provisioning APIs early. So this is where you can go in and start using and testing these APIs before they're even out for production use. But you also, uh, members of the program also get invited to regular sprint demos. So what does that mean for anyone who's not like in the software business? We do development sprints. So every two weeks we finish up a development sprint where we're working on the product. And, um, Sprint demos are basically where we invite all of the members of the, the developer program to a, a webinar and they get to watch sprint demos from the developer platform team at Tableau. And we're, we will be very crisp and say, hey, this thing, we just finished it. Here's what it looks like. Here's how it works. Sometimes we'll go to them and say, hey, we're, we're kind of contemplating a design here. We're not really sure of the best way. We'll present the options. And then we use that as a, a, as a sounding board so that we can get you know, that early feedback. We want to get that feedback so we deliver the functionality that our customers really need. But then we also want to just give them early access and make them feel like they're part of the process. Yeah, it's a community now. Exactly. So you have that feedback loop. And what kind of platform are you, are you doing? This is a webinar-based thing? Or are you you're on some kind of a, a casting? You're doing a Slack video? Like, how are you going about it? Yeah, so we, we started, we kind of started a lot of this um, with the extensions API. So last year at Tableau Conference, we announced a developer preview of the extensions API. And we did a very similar thing. We invited people to join this program. We gave them early access to the bits. We um, did sprint demos for them, but it was focused only on extensions. And we use um, we use a platform uh, called Center Code. I don't know if you've heard of them. Oh, I've heard of that. It's a great software platform for uh, engaging community in a really 
deep way. It's more than like forums. Mm -hmm. It like it allows us to people to submit um, feature requests and open up bugs. We can share content there and whatnot. So oh, so uh, so we'll we'll be using Center Code again for for the developer program, but. Again, we learned a lot of these things doing the extensions uh, API preview. And now we're just saying, hey, it's not just about extensions. It's our whole developer platform now. And we're just, we're again, just stoked for TC. This is going to be great. Well, let me ask you one question. I think you've already kind of answered it because you've, you've used Azuqua now. And you've said, you said you took your team, what, three minutes to mm -hmm. set up a flow? Yeah. What excites you most about working with us and using our product? What, what really gets you? I think it's the fact that like, I feel like we, our two companies kind of have us, and Dan talked to this a, a little bit, like I feel like we have a similar idea or similar philosophy around just ease of use, like making, I think, what did you say exactly? I think you're gonna uh, make hard shit really easy. Yeah, easiest way to do hard shit. Easiest way to do hard shit. And that's the official yeah. marketing tagline for Azuqua For Azuqua, that's the official marketing tagline. <laughs> See, CMO approved. Uh, <laughs> But that's different than the easiest way to do hard shit because, or sorry, easiest way to do hard shit is different than making hard shit easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you Very. require, and this is the other learning that I got from Tableau coming over to Azuqua and kind of went about installing quickly, and that's actually why I hired Dave right away, was the platform itself, like if you're just pointing and clicking, you probably can't do that many hard things. Right at the end of the day, you need to. These tools are both really, really powerful and robust, and there's so many amazing capabilities that you need to create training and education, enablement material around, and then people will learn how to use those things, and they will be able to fully unlock the power. Versus tools that are just templatized and you can't really do much with it. Totally. And right, and we ran into that with Tableau competitors too. They're like, well, gosh, those templates get you seventy-five percent of the way there with just two clicks, and you're done. But in reality, that was never the case, and people never really fully learned to use it. So Tableau's power was always in both the platform being and the tool being complemented by all this great educational enablement material. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess like just to come back to your question, Dave, I think it's really that we we look to enable like really hard things, but in kind of an easy way. Mm -hmm. And so I, like when I've used Azuqua, I'm always just like, oh, this is really cool. Like how many things I can connect to and not have to write any code whatsoever. But when I need to write code, I can like drop in and I can say, actually, let me add this little thing here. Let me add a little bit of custom code. So and, like yeah, you, JavaScript you, stuff, JavaScript stuff, HTTP post and all those things I can do. So yeah, I, I just think it's a really, really great tool to, to work with. It's a lot of fun. I, and I have to say, I, I'm becoming more and more of an API person. And the first question I always ask of any software vendor is, do you have an, a, a, an API? Here, here's an example. You know, I just got a new security system. And when I was on the phone with their salespeople, I'm like, do you have an API? Well, actually, yes, we do. So now I can do things with my security system at home when a door opens or whatever with the Zuqua. I mean, that's a personal use case, but just the, the possibility is once you start unlocking, Dan, like you use that term, the folks in the hackathon, they're going to be the first unlocker, uh, unlockers and levelers. They're going to be like, oh, I'm going to do this to this and this and this and this and this. And then that's a feedback loop. Right. So this is just, this is just amazing stuff. And it's a great connection. Yeah, I agree. So extensions has GA'd. We've got the the webhooks developer preview coming. We've got the de partner pro or developer program coming. That's yeah. pretty exciting. What else are you excited about coming at TC? Developers or beyond? What's what's the things that yeah. are you most excited for New Orleans next week? Well, we've got another developer related thing that we're gonna drop. Uh, at conference next week, we're going to release something called Tableau UI, which is a set of basically of web development components, UI components. Because one of the things that we've noticed with extensions is when the extension is inside a Tableau, you want it to look and feel native inside a Tableau. And we have a very specific kind of UI ethos. And so you, it, it, we, we had actually developers tell us like, I spent hours and hours and hours trying to manually style my extension to look <laughs> like it was part of Tableau. And so we've been working hard on a library of these components so that an extensions developer or a web data connector developer can just start using these and have their um, their creation just feel very native inside of Tableau. So, so it's I'm, like scaffolded, you're like you have all the, the main visual layer there and they can just drop in their code into that? Well, I'd say it's more about you inside of your code. You just take our um, widgets library. I'm making air quotes here. You just <laughs> drop those in so that when you use a drop down control or when you use a input box or you use a button, 
those are styled to look just like Tableau automatically. Got it. That's fantastic. And that'll save them a lot of time. So they can focus on doing what they do best is developing that extension, not worrying about the visual layer. Exactly. And so we're just unveiling that for the first time at the hackathon. So again, it's like we're excited to get it out, but it's not done. And so we want to get it in people's hands so we can start getting feedback and how's it working and right. what else do we need to do? There's also, I think just, you know, I just love Tableau Conference because it's an incredible amount of work. <laughs> we we put in a lot of work to prepare this event, but it is so awesome to go and just connect with all the customers. And they are just, they're so passionate about what they do. And it's just, I always leave that week, like one, just exhausted um, because it's a really hard, intense week. But I also leave just really inspired from all the ways that customers are using Tableau, all the things they want to do next. Like they push us to do more and to innovate more. And we just get all the feedback, how they're using Tableau. So I, I just think it's such a great event. I always yeah, look forward I, to it. I think by far it's the, it's the best event in kind of B2B tech. Like just the, the passion of the users, how much that trans translates back to the employees. Like it just gets you energized. It's funny. It's, it's this mix of you're so exhausted after spending a week there on your feet all day, talking to customers, partners, analysts, whoever, working hard, and yet so motivated and uplifted. But what do you think the odds are we get a Domo Sideshow this year? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And if so, any guesses on musical acts? Because Flo Rida and Snoop was pretty good back in 2016. Ooh. Right, it was not Austin was it twenty. Two, two, it was Austin. It was yeah, Austin twenty sixteen because it was election year too. So it's an easy one to remember. A lot, that's lot, right. a lot packed into that week. That's right. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I honestly haven't thought about that company since then, really. But yeah, it's a good point. Like, who knows if they're going to try something in New Orleans? And do we get some local New Orleans acts? If so. It'll be who, fun who would see. it be? Harry, Harry Connick Jr. Is he? Well, you got. Uh, uh, oh no, you got also. This is we're now sad that we should know like the center of like jazz music and you know good amazing music coming out of New Orleans and we're naming Harry Connick Jr. <laughs> Trombone shorties from New Orleans. That'd be a good one to get. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know otherwise. But <laughs> <laughs> lots of amazing jazz musicians, which doesn't I don't think flies that style. But anyway, yeah. Uh, I my hunch is that is not going to happen this year. Okay. We will yeah. see. Well, that's 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 good. That's good. Better better than Ezra. Old nineties rock alt rock band i think they're from are new they orleans. from new orleans i think so oh there's a band i love cowboy mouth i don't know if you guys have heard them. them they're from the new orleans area they used to they used to play a lot oh great stuff great stuff is is lil wayne from new orleans yeah i don't know i um, think lil wayne's from new orleans okay, originally that, and but that maybe, feels more maybe, on brand than better than ezra but maybe the, via miami where is he I, I feel like i just read something about lil wayne recently but i mean if he's from new orleans i, I okay, think well, that, that would in. be a great show so you're putting money on domo crashing the conference with lil wayne i don't think they could afford lil wayne yeah, well, I, th I think I think pre IPO, he, yes, post IPO, <laughs> it's quite it's questionable. Well, I'm just saying, I think I think he's probably demands a very premium premium pay right now. I think he's at the top of his game, so so he's out. <laughs> he's out. He's out. Better than Ezra in. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, gentlemen, anything else you want to do? We're gonna bring this thing home. Well, no, I mean, I, I guess if, if you would allow me just to say, like, if, if anyone wants to know more about Tableau's developer program and using webhooks, recommend go to tableau.com slash developer. That's where you can join our developer program and, you know, kind of get information about all of our APIs and, and whatnot. And then, yeah, I look forward to continuing to, to work with you guys. And just like I said, I think just webhooks and just the few events we're going to do even more but then i think it's also going to push you guys and us as well to deepen the tableau connector that's already in azuqua there's going to be more capabilities and things that people are going to want to do with that so there's be... work getting done on that connector literally as we speak as we sit here recording yeah, this podcast <laughs> a couple folks are, are off writing code on that connector right now to awesome it. so awesome it'll we'll be done by next week right? <laughs> <laughs> all right cool all right thanks ben for coming in we are uh we're excited to be working with you and all the stuff that tableau's got coming out on the developer side yeah thanks guys appreciate it fabulous and if you want to learn more please visit our website at www.azuka.com remember there's a free trial just click the button up at the top of the screen get a request a trial and uh we'll help you out it's a 14 day free trial right dan that's right and again, Ben, we are honored to have had you here today. We look forward to hanging out with you next week. And to our audience, thanks for joining us. And get out there and make some connections.